Let's say your husband goes out looking for a camper, you know, something to go on adventures in with the family. Well, you might assume that he's gonna come home in something like this. But then he tells you you heard about this new camper called the Warlock Camper that you just have to get. Yeah, maybe it costs a little bit more, but man, is it cool. What in the world did he end up with? Did some slick salesman just pull some fast moves on him? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about this exact situation, but when it comes to Dobermans. That's right, this video is all about Warlock Dobermans. What exactly is a Warlock Doberman? Who is a first Warlock? And where could you get one? All that is happening right now on this episode. So let's get going. The Warlock Dobermans are also often referred to as King Dobermans or Goliath Dobermans, and they're part of the Doberman legend and have been for a long time, but what in the world exactly are these dogs? Now, the original Warlock the Doberman was actually a real Doberman. He was an American Doberman pincher from the 1950s and 60s, and his full name was Borong the Warlock. And he was owned by a, a guy named Henry Frampton of Miami, Florida. Now, Mr. Frampton would show Warlock at all these different shows and competitions, and he just seemed to sweep them every time he entered. He was winning them right and left. He was a gorgeous dog. He racked up just a laundry list of titles, including 230 best of breed titles, uh, 20 best in specialty shows, 66 uh, working group titles, and he was the only Doberman pincher to have won the DPCA's national specialty three times. Definitely an impressive list of accomplishments. And as for Warlock's temperament, he was known for being an incredibly gentle, intelligent, and well-mannered dog, um, which is one reason that he was bred so much, and he went on to produce 25 AKC champions from his litter. And really, his name, Warlock, went on to become basically the definition of a well-bred, high-quality Doberman. He was certainly the superstar in the Doberman world, and arguably the dog world in general. And interestingly, he wasn't even an uh, oversized Doberman at all. In fact, he was 20 inches squared, which means he was about 20 inches tall at the withers or shoulder area, and his back was about 20 inches long, which does fit right in with today's breed standard for the American Doberman Pincher. Legend has it that one day, Henry Frampton, the owner of Warlock, was in the show ring showing one of Warlock's daughters in Greensville, South Carolina, when he suddenly collapsed and died. And when that happened, uh, a guy named Joe Gregory stepped up, grabbed the lead for Warlock's daughter, and led her through the rest of the show where she ended up winning best in show. Now, before Mr. Frampton died, he had made it known that should he die before his beloved Doberman Warlock, that he wanted his dog euthanized and buried with him. He felt that their bond was so strong that the misery and grief would be too much for Warlock. So legend has it that that's what happened. Here's an actual picture of the original Warlock. Look at that. He's a good looking dog. Now, uh, pictures were a little grainier back then, but he's a great looking dog that just exemplified the traits of a Doberman Pinscher. Now, after Warlock's original death, um, the term Warlock really just initially meant a really well-bred uh, Doberman. But in about the 1970s, the demand was really high for bigger and larger, more impressive Dobermans. So a lot of breeders started using this term Warlock to mean basically just an exceptionally large Doberman. This marketing thing seemed to work because it would attract buyers that were willing to pay higher prices for a dog that was labeled as a Warlock. It's really interesting that the term Warlock was adopted to be used for this purpose because Warlock himself was a standard size Doberman. He's 20 inches at the shoulder and 28 inches is the uh, breed maximum that's outlined in the uh, breed standard for Dobermans, for males. And it also says that a dog should not weigh more than 100 pounds. And I'm sure that there are still some descendants out there somewhere of the original Warlock, but most of the time when you go to a breeder and they say that they're selling you a Warlock Doberman, they're really just telling you a marketing term to say that they're a large Doberman. I hate to say it, but a Warlock isn't an official breed of dog at all, and it's not even a variety of Doberman. And because it's nothing official, it's really hard to define because it can mean whatever people decide it means. And in this case, more often than not, they decide it's an exceptionally large do Doberman. And people who have purported to be owners of Warlocks oftentimes report that the dog weighs in excess of 120 pounds, 130 pounds, even 150 pounds, which is far outside the breed standard for a Doberman Pinscher. 
But in all reality, these dogs may not just be big Dobermans. In fact, with weights like those, the chances are more often than not that they're a mixed breed. Uh, there are very popular mixes out there that are often referred to as Warlock or Goliath or King Dobermans, such as a Doberman mixed with a Great Dane, also often called a Dober Dane. Um, these two are often mixed to make what looks like a taller Doberman, or a Rottweiler mixed with a Doberman, also called a Rotterman um, quite frequently. And these two are mixed to make what looks like a bulkier Doberman. And you know, it's fine if you want a mixed breed dog. There's a lot of reputable breeders that specialize in those exact mixes that I just outlined for you. Um, and I think it's fine. It's a great thing. I believe every dog out there has their own set of positive traits about them, even mixed breeds, of course. Um, but I think it's important that whatever breeder you go with is honest with you about what the dog is and what the dog isn't. And they can be a Dober Dane or they could be a Rotterman, but those dogs are not full-blooded Dobermans. Now, if you just really want one of these dogs that people refer to as Warlock Dobermans, then you can actually go out there searching for a whole lot of different terms. Um, if you're using some of the breeder marketplaces out there, you can search for terms like uh, Doberman Great Dane Mix or Rottweiler uh, Doberman Mix or Dober Dane or Rotterman or Doberweiler or any of these other terms. I'll put them up on your screen. And even on occasion, if you go to the AKC uh, Breeder Marketplace and you type in Warlock, on a rare occasion, you'll get some results there as well. Just keep in mind, you're basically looking for a bigger dog. And in general, at least in the Doberman world, the bigger a Doberman is, the more strain it puts on their hips and their joints and their heart as well. So definitely take health into consideration also. So remember, if your breeder is trying to sell you a Warlock Doberman, a King Doberman, or Goliath Doberman, chances are they're probably selling you a mixed breed dog, or maybe it is a purebred Doberman that's just a normal Doberman slightly on the larger side. Uh, a lot of breeders might try to prove that they're a Warlock by showing a pedigree that has the name Warlock somewhere in the lineage. Um, if that's the case, definitely take that with a grain of salt as well and do your own research because, yeah, it could be a descendant of the original Warlock, but it's also really easy to change the dog's name with a small registration fee with the AKC. Anybody can tack the name Warlock on the end of their Doberman. So like anything else, buyer beware. If you want to keep learning about the Doberman breed, then definitely take a look at some of the other videos on my channel, such as this one right here, where you can learn about how the Dobermans helped to save the free world during World War II and a lot of other cool facts about them. Or you can check out this video, where you learn about the differences between American Doberman Pinscher and yes, the slightly larger European Doberman. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep spreading the word about how amazing the Doberman breed really is. And of course, see you next time.